Don't worry, Coach. I'm going RX. What's up? It's Ben from Wad Prep, where we help you RX more workouts. And this video is all about helping you get your best score possible on CrossFit benchmark workouts, Cindy. Cindy is one of the most famous CrossFit workouts, and it's one of the first ones that I ever did myself over multiple years. It's been over a decade since I first started CrossFit. I've done Cindy several times, and in this video, I'm going to share with you all of the secrets to help you get your best score ever on Cindy and also do the workout the right way as opposed to the wrong way, which we'll get into. But before we dig into the nitty gritty, in this video, I will cover strategy. I will cover exact tips that you should use on the pull-ups, the push-ups, and the air squats. And I will also talk about a couple unconventional tips that'll help you get your best score possible in this workout and many other benchmark workouts that you might happen to do. But first, let's go over the details of the workout. This workout is 20 minutes of as many rounds and reps as possible of five pull-ups. The pull-ups, as written, can be done anyway. That means strict, kipping, butterfly, one-armed. I don't really care. You can do them however you want. 10 push-ups and 15 air squats. We will get into the details of all three of those movements, but before we get into that, I do wanna say, if you stick around to the end of this video, I will reveal how you can get some super, super duper cool free training guides from Wad Prep, and I'm gonna send them to you for free. I'll share the details at the end of this video. So stick around, even if you don't like what I'm saying, I promise it's worth the wait. Remember, the purpose of an AMRAP is to get as much work done in a specific amount of time. So we have that time cap of 20 minutes. How much work can you get done in that 20 minute period? That is how we are testing our fitness in this workout. The first thing that I wanna talk about is should you hit Cindy RX or scaled? There's a very common phenomenon in CrossFit where people will be locked in on the scale division or locked in on the RX division. And let me shed some light on that. For this particular workout, my rule of thumb is that you should practice a round or two. And if you're not hitting each round under two minutes at least, then chances are you should scale down this workout. You don't wanna make the classic mistake of saying, hey, don't worry, I'm gonna hit this workout RX and then totally crash and burn five minutes later. So, don't worry, coach. Yeah. I'm going RX. So rule of thumb is try a round or two, and if you can easily complete them uh, under two minutes per round, that'll put you at about 10 or more rounds in the 20 minute period, then that's a good benchmark. That's a good starting point. If you can't complete more than 10 rounds in this workout in 20 minutes, then chances are you should have scaled down, either change the rep scheme or change the range of motion, which we'll get into later in this video. But overall, if you can get 10 plus rounds, you're in good shape. If you can get in the upper teens, that is a great score. If you can get in the mid twenties, that is a phenomenal score. And I have heard stories of CrossFit Games athletes getting 30 rounds and above, which I think is absolutely mind blowing. Next, I wanna talk about pacing. Like I say with most workouts, slow is smooth, smooth is fast. That is a Navy SEAL mantra and it very much applies to this workout. What many, 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 many people fall into is the trap where they come out absolutely as hard as possible and then they crash and burn. They go as fast as they humanly can and then it ends up in disaster. That is Coach, how much time is left? 18 minutes. That is what I would like for you to avoid. So rather than slowing down over the course of this workout, I would rather actually see you stay at the same exact pace for about 15 to maybe 18 minutes. And then towards the end, that's when you try to pick up the pace. If you crash and burn from the beginning, then you'll end up with a worse score compared to the athlete that actually gets a little quicker and gets a little smoother as the workout goes on. So it's very important to stay consistent each and every round. 
As a coach, I would rather see an athlete hold that 85% effort pace the entire time and then finish strong than have a hero come out at 100% effort and then end up crawling through the last couple rounds. In order to help us maximize our time in this workout, we're gonna get into the nitty gritty of each movement, but first we need to talk about one of the most important factors that's easily overlooked, and that is the transitions. In this workout, there are so many transitions. When I go from doing my pull-ups to my push-ups to my air squats, it's extremely important to keep everything tight and to keep everything smooth. So there are a litany, that's a great SAT word, there are so many problems that people run into, whether it's using water as a station in the workout. So maybe they'll do some pull-ups, they'll do their push-ups, they'll do their squats, and then take a sip of water and do that 20 times in the workout. That's not what you want. You don't need a water break. I would just say hydrate before the workout, hydrate after the workout. You can probably go 20 minutes without a drink of water and be perfectly fine. Next, we have the common problem where people are obsessed with the chalk bucket. They get locked in every single time they do anything, they need to chalk themselves up and that will waste a ton of time. Imagine stopping for a chalk break in between each round over the course of 20 minutes, that is going to add up to a ton of time where you could have at least squeezed in another round or two to maximize your score and to maximize your work output. And another issue that I see with people and their transitions Oh my gosh, this one blows my mind, and that is counting your rounds. So in this workout, you might get into the upper teens or the low 20s, or heck, maybe even the upper 20s. That's a lot of counting. So how are you going to keep track of each and every round? If you're actually trying to measure yourself and, and set a score that eventually, hopefully, you'll be able to beat somewhere down the road, then you have to make sure that you keep track of your rounds efficiently and effectively. So here are some common mistakes that I pe see people make. Number one, we have the classic gambling problem. The person who decides to use poker chips. Imagine having a stack of 30 poker chips and then carefully moving them from one stack to the next. If you happen to step incorrectly, your, your stack of chips will come tumbling down and then you will probably forget where you are. I am very much against using poker chips. I've seen so many people waste so much time. I've seen them get kicked across the floor. I've seen all kinds of stuff happen. Just don't, poker chips are so lame. Don't use them. Next, uh, you might have heard me talking about how I like to use a whiteboard and a whiteboard marker to keep track of my rounds. This is not what I mean. I don't want you to carefully pull the cap off of your marker, make a beautiful mark, a tally mark on the whiteboard, and then take the cap and while you're on the verge of blacking out, try to get the cap back onto the marker, then place said marker on the floor and then go into your next round. That is a huge waste of time, and I've seen people waste 30 seconds fiddling with the marker in between rounds. Or, oh my gosh, when I used to own my affiliate, I almost got to the point where I started charging people $10 every single time they left a whiteboard marker on the ground because I would have to go buy a new pack of whiteboard markers. So don't be the athlete that uncaps the marker, throws it on the ground, especially if it's not your marker, and throws it on the ground and then just lets it sit there. How sad is that? That poor uncapped marker just drying out, gasping to be capped again. Don't do it. Hashtag save the markers. So where does that leave us? Are we gonna count on our fingers? Are we going to make chalk marks on the ground? No and no, because people who count on their fingers or count on their head, chances are they're gonna overcount. Let's be honest, people. So here's what you're gonna do. You're going to use the line technique. All you need is one whiteboard marker and some sort of whiteboard, or you, I guess you could do this with chalk if you really wanted. Make one line, maybe two lines. And then all you need to do is at the end of each round, just swipe your little finger on that line to mark your round. And it is the quickest, smoothest, and most effective way to keep track of your rounds. And it's gonna save a ton of time, especially if you're doing a ton of rounds in this 20 minute workout. All right, it's time to move on to the individual movements of this workout. We're going to talk about a few tips on how to maximize your efficiency and also cover some of the most common problems. So let's first talk about the first movement, which is the pull-up. Now for the pull-up, you can do strict pull-ups, you can do butterfly pull-ups, but for this video, I'm just gonna talk about probably the most common in CrossFit, which is the kipping pull-up. Remember, the kipping pull-up, it's not a real pull-up. 
I understand all of the YouTube trolls. Thank you. I know you're still going to comment, so you might as well just go leave the comment below and just let me know how it's not a real pull-up. Okay, thank you. All right, now the kipping pull-up is the most common pull-up in CrossFit and that's what we're gonna be covering here. But again, a lot of this will apply to the butterfly or the strict. When it comes to the pull-ups, remember we need to start with our arms fully locked out at the bottom. So that means full extension of the elbows and we need to end with our chin above the bar. Don't be the athlete who thinks they're getting the chin above the bar, but it barely is passing the top of their, the crown of their head. I'd rather see five really, really good singles with minimal rest in between each rep than someone who just tries to blaze through five really ugly sloppy pull-ups, maybe knocks out a tooth or, or hits their forehead on the bar. So take the pull-ups with control and make sure that each pull-up looks exactly the same. If you need to scale down, here are a couple examples that you can use. These are pulled directly from our kipping pull-up performance class class and also our strict pull-up strength class. We have eight week training programs and if you're someone who's trying to level up your pull-ups, one of those could be effective or you can even take our butterfly pull-up breakthrough course. So those are the three pull-up courses we have and they will really help you level up your pull-up game. But these drills are effective modifications where maybe if you can't do this workout RX, you're unable to do five pull-ups per round, you could scale down to do some of these other pull-up variations or if you wanted to, you could always reduce the reps to three pull-ups per round rather than the RX standard, which is five. And probably the most important part of the entire pull-up equation is do not rip your hands. Don't be the athlete that rips a gaping hole in your hands and there's blood spurting everywhere. And then you just decide to shake it off and keep on going, sharing your, your blood with the rest of your CrossFit gym. You're making me want to vomit just talking about you. So in order to prevent yourself from tearing, we actually have a phenomenal video called The Ultimate Guide to CrossFit Hand Care. It's on YouTube. If you just go to Google or go into YouTube and search for Wad Prep Hand Care, you will find that video and it's phenomenal. It's going to teach you how to shave your calluses and also a few of the favorite grips that I recommend that you can wear during a workout like Cindy. So go check out that video and it will help prevent you from ripping huge holes in your hands and bleeding all over everyone's equipment. Next, let's talk about the push-ups. This is probably the most limiting factor. Believe it or not, some people will knock out those pull-ups just fine, including myself, but then the push-ups are going to be a bit of a challenge, mainly because we don't do very high volume pushing with our chest in CrossFit. There's not too much bench press. There's really not that much in the way of pull-ups or weighted dips. So this is where a lot of athletes will struggle. Um, so it's very easy if you want, you can break this up five and five. So do five, shake it out, then do another five, that's great. But the main things that I want you to understand about this push-up are the standards. So the standards of movement is that we need to be in a solid plank position. That means from our heels all the way to the top of our head, it should be a nice straight line. And then I continue that straight line all the way down to touch my chest to the ground and then all the way up where I lock my arms, lock my elbows fully out at the top. So this is a, an example of a great push-up. Now, the following examples are what I commonly see in a workout like Cindy. So we have a plethora of different push-up variations, none of which will count in my gym or in any gym that I happen to be doing Cindy in. I will yell at you if you're doing any of these pull-ups. And some of you in the crowd right now are nodding your head and saying, yeah, that's the one that I do. Or Ooh, I totally know a guy or a girl who does that exact push-up. So none of these push-ups should count. Please, please don't do them. Remember the goal is to keep that nice solid plank position. We shouldn't be kipping or swinging or humping or doing anything. There's no yoga poses happening here, just a normal solid push-up. And if you want, you can even add a hand release to the bottom if you want to make it even more difficult. But it's a simple movement that's easily messed up. If you would like to modify this, you could potentially go from your knees or you could elevate your hands on a platform. So rather than having your hands on the ground, you can put your hands on the side of a bench or on the side of a box and keep that nice solid plank position. All of those things can work. But for the most part, I just want to reiterate how we need to be avoiding the variations of the push-up that are not allowed in this workout. Last but not least, we have the air squat. This is probably the easiest part of the workout, although you will start to feel a solid leg burn by the end. So the standards of movements for the air squat are pretty simple. We start with our hips fully locked out, knees extended, and then I lower myself down so that my hip crease is below the top of the knee. So I should see that I'm below parallel, below that top of the knee, 
and then I finish the movement by standing all the way up. Now, it's such a simple movement. How could anyone mess it up? Well, I'll tell you right now, a lot of people mess it up. Here are just a couple small samples of what you can expect to see in your local CrossFit gym when people are doing a workout like Cindy. Ugh, it's the worst. Please don't do any of these variations of the of the air squat. If you need to modify the air squat, there are a couple things that you can do. If you're someone who wants to get full depth every rep, then just slide a medicine ball underneath your butt and squat. And as soon as your butt touches the medicine ball, stand all the way up. That's a great way to make sure that you're getting that full depth. Or if you're someone who can't quite get full depth, that's totally fine. You can modify by squatting to a target that's a little bit above parallel. The bottom line is we wanna keep our standards the same. What we don't want is Joe doing 30 rounds of half air squats. And then Cindy doing Cindy, I know, mind blowing. If your name's Cindy, I bet this totally blows your mind when you're doing yourself in a workout, crazy. So Cindy, uh, let's say she's going full ass to grass. So all the way, butt, all the way to the ground and then standing back up and she only gets 18 rounds. Who did better or more reps? Well, technically this guy who, who did half reps got more, but Cindy actually did full range of motion. What we want, the reason why we have all of these standards in CrossFit is so that you're hitting the movement to the same range of motion as everyone else. So whether it's him or her or that guy or that girl, we're all hitting to the same standard and that allows us to measure ourselves against each other and against ourselves in the future. So hit the standards for the pull-up, for the push-up, for the air squat, and then take all of the tips that I gave you about transitions and protecting our hands and this will help you get your best score possible. Remember, Ultimately, this workout will be a trap. You're gonna to wanna to move really fast in the beginning, but remember, slow is smooth, smooth is fast. If you can stay steady this entire workout and then finish strong, you will get a great score, and I can't wait to see how you do in this workout. Before we go any further, the question of the day for you, we mentioned it in the middle of this video, is how do you count your rounds? How do you, if, if you have a 20 minute AMRAP like this, how do you normally count your rounds? Are you using the line technique or are you using some technique that I've never even heard about? Maybe you're using the dreaded, the dreaded poker chips. Maybe you're leaving an uncapped marker. Let me know in the comments, give as much detail as possible. How do you normally count? And let's be honest, if you count in your head, you probably add a couple reps. Yeah, you do, you know it. All right, and then I also promised in the beginning of this video, where can you go to get free training guides? Well, if you go to wadprep.com slash pullups, then you can download free training guides on things like strict pullups, kipping pullups, and butterfly pullups. All of those are great free training resources that I will leave here for you. Also, if you just go to wadprep.com, on the homepage, there will be some sort of free material that you can download that I promise will help you take your CrossFit game to the next level. Also, if you are a master's athlete that is looking to level up your, your performance and you want to work directly with the Wad Prep coaching team, then click the link in the description below or in the top comment. I will have a series of links down there, one of which will be Wad Prep Plus. Wad Prep Plus is the Wad Prep answer to how do master's athletes actually get great coaching. I realize there's a lot of you out there who feel undervalued, who don't feel like CrossFit HQ or some of the more popular training programs are giving you the personalized feedback that you need and deserve, and that is what Wad Prep Plus is here to help you do. And also, we're going to be covering a lot of master's events in the future. So if you get inside Wad Prep Plus, I'm telling you, it's going to take your master's performance to the next level. So. With that being said, answer that question of the day. How do you normally keep track of your AMRAPs? Thumbs up if you liked the video. Click thumbs down if you didn't somehow. Um, for all of the pull-up, the kipping pull-up haters, please leave a thumbs down. I respect your decision and I can't wait to comment on your comments trolling me so that I can troll you. And last but not least, hit that subscribe button and I will see you in the next video. Peace.